Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is I still have wet hair. Apologies for that. Um, and what you will know, because I'm sure you've seen the thumbnail and read the description, read the title. This is actually a viewer requested film. Um, I've been asked a number of times, how do you choose which colours will work with each other? Now, I've actually got a background, I worked for a print company, so I've worked with... Pantone colours, I'm used to colour theory, um, even though I didn't take art at school, bizarrely. Um, so this film is going to be explaining easily how you can choose which colours work, which colours will blend together, which colours won't look daft together. And once you know the basic colour theory, uh, then you can try kind of breaking off a little bit and trying a few more um, colour combinations of your own. But certainly initially, hopefully, doing this will help. I'm going to put a picture of the colour wheel just here. I'm sure most of you have seen a colour wheel before. Three primary colours, red, yellow, blue. This is not a printer's colour wheel. Printer's colour wheel would have cyan, magenta, yellow and black. So make sure that you've got the primary colour colour wheel. Or what I will do later on in this film I will put up on screen and hold it there for a few seconds for you all of the diagrams that I've created to put into this film for you and then hopefully you can get a screenshot of that you know take a screenshot on your phone if you're watching or download it on your machine and then get it printed off and have it tacked up in front of you attached to your mirror with a bit of blue tack so that hopefully you will easily be able to refer to it now, the first easiest kind of colour combination is what I've done today, which is monotone. So it's basically taking different shades of the same colour. But that can get boring after a while. So, the first type of colour combination and probably the one that most people start with are complementary colours. These are colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel. Now, the only thing I will say about blending complementary colours together is that you do have to be careful not to overwork them or they will turn muddy. Because by using complementary colours, you're effectively blending all three primary colours together. Which will give you a mucky brown, a greyish brown shade. So, I mean that's, that's true of all of these colour combinations. If you overwork them, you are likely to get a muddier colour. But it's especially true when you're using complementary colours. So for example in this one, red and green. Red and green work fantastically together. But if you blend them together and work them too much, you will find they'll muddy up. So you think, oh, okay, maybe that's that's not what you want to do just yet. So you could always look at um, analogous colours, which are colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. So similar to what I've got here, where this is all shades of mint, you could do a true green 
a yellowy green and a tealy blue and they would blend nicely together less likelihood of them muddying together because there's no red in there to give you the third primary colour does that make sense? I hope it does it's only if you've got a red, a yellow and a blue mixing together that you are unlikely to get muddy so obviously going back to the complementary one green is made of blue and yellow so effectively you are blending all three shades analogous ones you are blending shades in a section around the wheel and you'll find that that is less likely to muddy up it also gives you um, a very sort of harmonious gentle blended look together um, you can then look at triadic colours. Now again, with triadic colours, you do run the risk of muddying if you overblend them because you are using effectively a red, a yellow and a blue or combinations of. So the option that I've done here, for example, is a true green, a golden orange, and a bluey toned or true or royal purple. Now those colours look beautiful together but just be careful. Obviously if you blend the purple and the green together you are using a blue and a red in the purple and a blue and the yellow in the green so it can go muddy. Same thing if you're using the purple, which is a blue and a red, and then the red and the yellow, it can go muddy, but it's less likely to. It's only when you blend all three together. So if, for example, you decided you wanted to do this, I would do um, maybe um, a light green on through the crease and up on the lid then a deep purple through the crease and on the outer corner with an orange shimmer on the lid and then that's much less likely to actually muddy up all right but again triadic colors work extremely well together you can also do what's known as split complementary where it's still a triangle but it's not an equilateral triangle it looks like this. So your, if you imagine your first complementary, which is say the red and the green, so you keep the green, and then at the red top, you just go one colour either side. So again, these can muddy up if you're not careful when you blend them, but they can provide some very very striking looks. Alright, so if I put triadic and split complementary together on screen, so you can see the difference there. Triadic is... Uh, triadic is more likely to muddy up because you're using equal points around the colour wheel. Split complementary could muddy up, but... Uh, depends on, on which shade you're, you're mixing together. So you can also look at doing a rectangle which a lot of people don't think of. So on this one for example you're still using the complementary colours of red and green but then you've gone two colours round so you've got the golden orange and then you've got the, um, the sort of what I would call a cobalt blue Again, those will blend beautifully together, but obviously you're using two sets of complementary colours. Red and green are complementary, the blue and orange are complementary. So be careful if you are blending those shades together, because they are more likely to muddy up if you overwork them. If you don't overwork them, they can be fantastic. 
Likewise, you can also do squares as well as rectangles, where again you are using complementary colours that you are blending. So again, be careful when you're blending them because they can muddy up, but you can get some super, super striking looks when using those four shades. Um, so for example, I mean, one that I've not got on here, but if you were to look at, say, complementary and split complementary, well, you could say, uh, well, I want to use the greens almost analogous green because you're using the two greens next to each other but then you want to use the red as well that can work but it can really really muddy up very very quickly which is why I've not included it in the diagrams here these are if I put if I sort of lean this way a bit if I put the whole six of them up here now in terms of ease of blending, um, initially I would say analogous would be your best bet. It's the least likely to muddy up. Um, followed by the split complementary. Then the complementary. Then the triadic and then the square and the rectangle. So if you're starting off and you're only just blending different colours together, start off the analogous route. So start off with three or four colours next to each other on the colour wheel. Once you feel comfortable doing that, then try split complementary. Once you've cracked the split complementary, try just complementary. Just make sure that you don't overwork them. Now hopefully you'll have been able to get a screenshot of that or download it if you're watching me on your PC. If you want me to send you the diagram of all six, then just drop me a message on either Twitter or Instagram and I will happily shoot that across for you. Um, so a bit of a shorter film this time, but I really hope that that has helped in terms of working out which colours will and which colours won't work together. But that being said, there are no rules in makeup. If you decide that you want to blend a green and an orange together go for it because that's one side of a triadic one so you can still do that I've not included that on here because effectively it's just one bar of the triadic one but there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do that pick a colour and then go two colours away from it each side and use those three shades. Start off with the basics. Once you're happy with your blending skills and you know that you can blend without the colours going muddy, then start getting more adventurous and just, you know, if you're unsure Try blending them on the back of your hand rather than on your eye at first. Put primer on the back of your hand, whatever eye base you would normally use, whether it's the Crow and Pebble that I always use, or if you use um, a concealer or a MAC paint pot. Whatever you use as your eyeshadow base, just put some of that on your hand and just try blending colours together on the back of your hand, practising your blending skills without tugging on the soft skin of your eye. And then you can see exactly 
how much blending you can do before they start muddying up. Right, I really hope this has helped and it's answered your questions. If you do have any more questions, do drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I do read all of my comments and I try to reply to all of them as well. Right, if you are a regular viewer, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube is still doing that lovely thing of unsubscribing people, even when they don't want to be unsubscribed. Lovely. So encouraging. If, however, this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome. Um, I have filmed this eye look, hopefully it will be up by now. Uh, if it is, I will try and remember to link it in the description. If I forget, give me a nudge in the comments and I'll either update the description or I'll pin a comment so that you can easily get to the link. Um, I've got a lot of other films you can watch. If you want to see me put my colour theory into practice, my colour theory, colour theory into practice. Um, and it would be awesome if you would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button, turning it from red to grey, and then ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications, and then hopefully YouTube will actually tell you when I upload a new film. Right, okay, just a quick one from me today. So I will sign off as I always do, wishing you all to Stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.